what is up you guys, and of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours through, of course, the Scarinder. And today we're going up against my good friend Hannah, or Hannah Panna, and yeah, she is a ferocious battler and a very good friend, always pleasant battling her, because she always gives me a hard time, which is, um, not gonna lie, that's actually quite entertaining, because that means I have to really prove myself versus her. And we decided to go for a UU match, and I had a UU team, which I really like myself, um, it's basically a Trick Room team, uh, everything on it basically has a Trick Room, I think I have four members with Trick Room, that is how extreme that is. Uh, and she is using a team of Whimsicott, Blastoise, Porygon Z, Darmanitan, uh, Kubalion and Aesulf. So Aesulf seems to be the obvious lead here. Uh, my team um, is obviously made with Diane, she has a lead with Stealth Rocker and hasn't have mentaled her basically to uh, avoid being taunted and of course having Trick Room, Moon Blast and Explosion. Pangoro, which I believe is Life Orb, Sword Stance, Reuniclus, which is uh, Life Orb with, uh, yeah, Trick Room and stuff like that. Porygon C with Trick Room, Bulky Bulky. Crodon, we can Life Orb too, I think a 5 Life Orb member, which is extreme. Uh, Crodon is the usual set basically from that, and Hoopa is also Life Orb with Trick Room. Like I said, 4 members with Trick Room. It's made to kinda, if they can survive the matchup, that they preferably actually goes to Trick Room and then pass it on to relevant Mon who can sweep from there. So it's a lot of pressure if I get the Trick Room up, which is not that easy. So with all that said, let's see what happens. I should also state that Hannah's team is not really the fastest, so I don't really have too much use of Trick Room outside of actually catching something off guard. So she'll leave with Aesil, which I felt was really obvious. I myself going to bring Dainji. And this is actually, I do believe, a quiet nature Dianchi with max attack and max special attack, so no bulk whatsoever. Now, Hannah will go for the taunt, that's fine and expected. I'll go for Stealth Rocks myself, of course. And yeah, as of right now, we're looking kinda good, actually. We're looking really, really nice, and uh, we can preserve some pressure. Now, I will go for the Trick Room, of course, and uh, which will lead the way, actually, for some entertaining kind of matchups, really. And um, I do believe she goes for Blastoise here while I myself go for the Moon Blast. Uh, also, I, it's probably just me, but I think I kind of recorded a bit low. As you see, I barely touched the text there, so sorry about that. It does bother me while I do record this myself, just notice that. Anyway, her Blastoise take a massive amount of damage. So she'll bring back the Aesilf and... Um, you know, that's quite alright, if anything, and you keep moon blasting. Now, she could have Mega Evolved and possibly survived, but I really wanted to lose my, um, my Dianchi here, because I'm right now just losing precious turns in the Trick Room, which is, like I said, something I really want to capitalize and utilize in my favor. So, the Trick Room turns will end next turn, and I know that. She'll bring Cobalion, and I can't hit this thing super effectively. Like, Moon Blast is my strongest hit, and then I have to take Retaliation for the Iron Head. And knowing that Arnett probably is going to hit me, I need to get out. I can't risk this kind of pressure. And uh, I do believe she takes this opportunity to go for rocks, right? Uh, no, she goes for Ironhead. Alright, fair enough. But after this, she doesn't go for the close combat. I do believe she goes for the stealth rocks. While I set up... Actually, goes for Swole Stance. My bad. That's kind of scary, actually, thinking about it. I go for the Swords or Trick Room. She goes for Swords. I am I am all over the place today. Sorry. Anyway, I go for Trick Room, take an opportunity. I'm going to switch out and bring Hoopa because after Swords Stance, Close Combat is gonna hurt. So thank God I have a Ghost type such as, of course, Hoopa, who just is really, really extreme. Uh, Hoopa is extremely, um, how do you say, easy to KO, but my God, that 150 special attack is saying a whole lot against it. It just hurts and I do go for the focus blast because Psy Shock of course would not kill it, it simply would not. Now she'll go to the Vitra and uh, she is actually gonna catch me off guard here or I could have seen the Encore coming but at the same time I had a given opportunity to actually hurt her with of course Psy Shock so I do decide to go for that but like I said there she goes for of course that um, Encore and focus blast actually does massive, massive amount of damage. So I felt that, alright, I could probably risk it, like I really need to land this Focus Blast to kill her, but uh, unfortunately for me, I do miss it, and more unfortunate is this Moon Blast is gonna hurt me so hard, uh, hard enough, so I have definitely a feeling that I can't really stay in, and losing Special Attack of course means that I am now in no range of killing her with Focus Blast, 
And of course the trick group is over. So I am in actually a rough position, so I need to get out of there. Can't stay in. Gonna go back to Genesis to Porygon C. Praise the Prankster because I really want to see how much damage he does to me. And actually use um, that trace to recover back on if I can actually do that. Now she goes for Giga Rain and it definitely doesn't do a whole lot, which means that, hmm, I might actually be better off going for Trick Room here anyway, uh, because I can just really preserve pressure with Trick Room, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to do just that. She goes for Offensive uh, move, actually. Uh, I thought she would try to kind of stall me here, or even switch out, actually. But she does stay in, I get the Trick Room up, and fearing that an Encore is gonna come back, uh, and I, obviously I can't really utilize myself with... Uh, with Genesis, uh, because if she encores me, that basically means I'm gonna force switch next turn. So I thought that she's probably gonna go for now for the encores. I'm going to Augustine, and um, yeah, she doesn't do that. She just actually attacked me, which was super surprising. Luckily for me, I do live with a slither of health, and uh, yeah, she had nothing that can take a side shock. Um, I can freely go for it, and life will take me out no matter what. And what do you know? The power, power of Hoopa is just enormous. There is just nothing taking that Psyshock. 150 base people, pretty darn scary. Pretty darn scary. So anyway, it goes to my Pangoro, which is probably my prime sweeper when it comes to this kind of environment. And she'll go to her Blastoise, and there is nothing this Blastoise can do. I can just go for a knockoff here. Um, I do pack, I believe, super power on this Mon too, but I don't really want to lose any kind of attack and knockoff. Is well within its area to take this guy out, and with, of course, me being brave instead of anything else, and actually pretty darn slow, I can take full advantage of that, and of course, Blastoise is actually kind of speedy too, uh, in comparison to Pangoro, of course. So, we do knock that one out. Her next one is Smiles, which, of course, is the Darmanitan, and I'm just going to say it as it is. There is nothing on her team taking this superpower. There is no one surviving this. Pangoro is an immense powerhouse in this kind of environment. It just, it just hurts. And yeah, Darmanitan goes down. Now the Twisted Dimension is over. And I feel that Porygon C is well within its right to kill my Pangoro. And trying to preserve actually some kind of... Um, winning score and basically sacking off the inferior Porygon. Um, obviously, uh, I could try to set up a Trick Room again and then she would probably be the mod to do just so since I actually have a full amount of HP and I don't really know if Porygon C has any kind of capabilities of actually hurting the NG whatsoever. So um, my thought process was basically uh, take this opportunity and I do find out his life orb not specs which is comforting because that obviously means that I actually have some wiggle room in <laughs> my portfolio here. And she'll go for Shadow Ball, that's her strongest move, and uh, yeah, that's a no. And of course, due to my investment in uh, max attack for some freaking reason, because I don't really know why I did that, but it actually pays off here. Uh, explosion is actually enough to KO this uh, Porygon C, so that's a 4-0 in my favor, which is, you know, it, it was actually a pretty straightforward game, and um, I have to give it to Hannah when it comes to that. Obviously, she was not prepped for a Trick Room team. Actually, I don't believe that kind of pressure has even... Uh, <laughs> she's ever been facing that kind of pressure in, of course, the UU tier, because it's not really that conventional. I'll even go so far and say it's kind of underwhelming. It did work here, but it worked here for other reasons than it being good. It basically caught off guard, and I got momentum through that. So, I think her team is actually really good for UU. It just... I got some weird momentum, and it actually behaved it kind of well. And the reason I say that is because I've used this team on, of course, on Showdown and, of course, on Fun, basically, on streams. And it is 50-50 when it comes to win ratios, because this team is extremely fragile. So if I don't pull off a Trick Room, I am actually kind of in a tough position. Uh, so, like I said, the only way it works, or the only reason it works in this game was because I had that kind of wiggle room when it comes to matchup against Hannah. Had she had a better lead or even caught me on it, uh, I might actually be in a tougher position. I was very lucky that that did not come to fruition. With that said, there is nothing wrong with the team she bring in. I'm just kind of lucky that I can actually even get some momentum against her. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was a really nice game. I I enjoyed it. It's probably one of the few times where, like I said, it actually worked. Uh, I had this team against Eric or Ashnack, kind of got destroyed by it. Basically, by choice bandit high jump kick was just 
all this team kind of needed. Uh, anyway, that was probably one of the worst games ever. But and then again, like I said, it's fragile enough to not maintain uh, momentum when it comes to hard-hitting teams uh, like such. Anyway, with that said, guys, um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Well, of course, thank you everybody for, of course, um, for watching the event event. And don't forget to leave a like and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I will be streaming tomorrow for more Wi-Fi battles. If you want to see me live in action, uh, make sure to check out my course Twitch, which is linked down below. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next video. Until then, take care.